Konnichiwa, bitches. It's a wet day out here, but nothing gets me wetter than the new Sig Spear. Uh, this thing is pretty cool. Uh, it's going to be replacing the M4, and it's uh, this is the designated the XM7. That's what the Army's calling it. It was originally supposed to be the XM5, but they said not happening. M4 going to M5, that's gay, it's stupid, we don't want to do it. We want it to have its own thing. So the XM7 is what it's designated as. Um, we're going to be asking a lot of questions in this video. I don't care about your question. Is it a good option to replace the M4? Go away! Is the 5.56 obsolete? Dude, dude, yeah. Like we've talked about in other videos. Don't really know, but let's get right on into it. The first thing that you realize when you pick this rifle up is she is fat as hell. Definitely, definitely a thick rifle, but she's a freak and she's got some skills, so we're gonna talk about those things. Um, she comes in at like 9.2 pounds dry. That's, I'm pretty sure without ammo, without a suppressor, without an optic, without any sort of doodad. So you're definitely getting a workout uh, carrying this thing around. Um, when it comes to a military aspect, long story short, you have a better chance of seeing me pregnant than walking around or doing a ruck with this thing on. It is extremely, extremely heavy. Um, Kind of uncomfortable. Uh, like my arms right here are like straining. I've been holding it up to my chest for like the last 10 minutes, trying to get the right cut in what I'm going to say, and I'm I'm hurting. Yeah, I'm hurting. It's an extremely heavy, heavy rifle. Um, that's the first thing you definitely notice about it. But uh, I guess if we just got to hit the gym some more, I don't know. <laughs> got to get a good sling. Um, but you will feel it. Uh, that's that's my first first real. Um, thought about the Sig Spear is how heavy it actually is. I'm running the OSS on it, an OSS suppressor. Um, it is a flow-through suppressor like the Sig one. Um, I'm not buying a Sig suppressor. I hear they're subpar at best, uh, so I don't really want to do that. I already have my OSS. It's running fine. Uh, I like it quiet. Don't really feel any gas in the face. Can't really complain. Not going out and buying another suppressor when I have a perfectly good one in my safe that I can use. But the it did come with uh, the three-prong muzzle brake on it, ready to be suppressed with a SIG suppressor. I didn't really see anything, any issues with it. Like I'd only shot maybe like 20 rounds with it with the actual muzzle brake on it, but I didn't really see anything that was concerning. People say that the, those small prongs don't really flash or don't really suppress the flash very well, but I didn't really notice anything about it. Uh, I knew I was gonna rip it off, so that was the first thing I did. So I can't really speak on it, but um, it does come with a three prong and it is suppressor ready for one of six suppressors. So gas block is really, really easy. You can definitely tell it was made for the military. You have a normal mode and then you have a suppressed mode. That's it. It's really, really hard to mess up, but I'm sure some of you finger lickers and mongoloids out there are somehow going to break it or do something. I haven't ran it. I, I kind of want to try it in the um, um, suppressed setting when it's not suppressed. People are saying that it just won't even run. I haven't even tried it, but I was reading some reviews and they were like, if it is in the suppressed setting, setting and you don't have a suppressor on it, it's not even going to work. Um, so that's kind of interesting, but I uh, haven't tried it out, but adjustable gas block, nothing really crazy to it. Unlike the Spear LT where it had like crazy mode and then like uncrazy mode it wasn't suppressed or unsuppressed it was like it was like intense ammo versus like not intense ammo it was kind of weird but this is really easy suppressed and normal can't mess it up but i'm sure some of you mongoloids out there are going to be sucking on your fingers and you're going to mess something up with it especially my fellow army guys a bunch of meatheads like myself but it's pretty foolproof system so mine right here is a 16 inch 308. It's a chrome line barrel and it's a one in 10 twist. The military, the XM7 is gonna be in the 277 Fury, or that's the civilian version. Uh, like a 6.8 by like 51 is, is going to be the uh, military's uh, caliber. Um, I know SIG is releasing, I think it's a 6.5 Creedmoor and 
a 277 variant of the spear for the civilian market, which is pretty cool. And all of this, this whole rifle is interchangeable. All you gotta do is get the barrel, swap it in, and you got a whole new caliber. So that's kind of cool. Um, you see a lot of companies doing that nowadays where they're like just interchangeable barrels and interchangeable um, calibers and stuff, which you have one rifle and you can, all you gotta do is buy the barrels, barrels and you got um, another caliber that you can shoot, which is pretty cool, especially for a military rifle like the Mark 22 by Barrett. Um, you have many calibers and all it is is just a swap of a barrel. So you can carry three different barrels with three different calibers, one rifle. So it is kind of a pretty cool tactical standpoint, but this one is 308. I would like to try the 277 Fury, but we will see what happens. This one's fun for now and I'll probably just keep it this way to be honest, but I would like to try out the 277 when ammo gets more available and it's a little cheaper. I think it's ridiculously expensive right now, so I don't really wanna spend five grand and remortgage my house for 20 rounds of 277 Fury, but so 308. Very tried and true round. Uh, it has sent many people to eternity and has killed lots of bloodlines, probably more than cancer. So 308, can't go wrong with it big fan of it probably one of my favorite calibers going into the rail it is all m locked i mean you got like more than enough i don't even think there's enough products out there to fit on how many slots you have for this rail which is cool but it does come with the um uh internal not internal the qd mounts for like a sling or something already on that's pretty cool just like the spear lt and that's a very very handy feature i've always liked that instead of you know especially when you have your m locks you got to put the actual um picatinny rail on it which can kind of suck sometimes so it's pretty awesome that they're like all right you're gonna put a sling on it anyway so let's just put a uh, mounting point right there for you which is pretty cool so you don't have to get any more you don't have to get a mounting mounting point for it it's already there sling ready to rock and roll because you're going to need it that's probably why they did it they probably put uh put the mounts on there because they're like there's no way you're carrying this thing around um you need a sling so that's probably why they put hey this thing is killing me man it is so heavy ah, 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 ah. Going into the lower receiver, it is all ambidextrous. You got the ambidextrous mag release. You got the ambidextrous safety switch. You got the ambidextrous, ambidextrous bolt release. And you even go as far as having ambidextrous charging handles. You got one on the left side here and then you got a normal one in the back, which is pretty cool. I don't know anybody, any other company or manufacturer that has a charging handle on the side. I could be wrong. If I am wrong, please leave it in the comment section, but I don't know anybody that's using a um, charging handle on like the left or right side. So cool feature. There's a lot going on with it. I mean, you have more than enough controls. Uh, I guess why they did that was you never have to ever get your hands off the rifle. So when you're like sucking on your fingers, when you're being Mongoloid Mike running around and you're like, just throwing your dick beaters around. You can always have a hand on the rifle and all you need is one to clear it of any malfunctions or anything like that or load it. So pretty cool feature. I'm sure that that's what the military wanted because all the army guys are total meatheads and you know, a lot of finger sucking going on. A lot of finger sucking going on in the, in the army. A lot of mongoloid mics in the army. So you gotta be careful, but you gave them a lot of different controls. So it might confuse them. It might scare them. I don't really know. We'll have to see how how uh, how how it does in the field and go from there. But I like the the charging handle on the left side. Um, I just think it adds uh, different. How do you say? A different piece to help you out. Um, you never have to take your hands hands off the rifle. So pretty cool feature. Pretty cool feature. The trigger. No bad complaints. I like the trigger. It's pretty soft. Um, good break on it. Good reset on it. Can't, I don't really wanna, I don't, ah, I don't really wanna talk about the trigger and give my honest opinion on it because I don't have too many rounds through this. I probably only have about like 400 rounds through this rifle as is right now. But this, how this video is, it's not my honest, it's not my, what I think about it. It's just my initial impressions of it. 
Um, I'm gonna do more more videos on the Sig Spear when I put some more rounds through it, but I think the trigger, I think, I think that that one you gotta, you gotta have some decent rounds through the rifle to, to feel how good or bad the trigger is. So far, it doesn't feel bad. Um, I like it so far, but again, I don't really want to. I don't really want to speak on the trigger right now. Um, I'll probably make that in the second video of the spear, and maybe we'll we'll put a new one in. Maybe we'll keep it. Not really sure, but so far so good. Um, the trigger's not bad, but could very very well change my opinion in the very near future. So we'll be careful with that. The grip, sandpapery. It's ribbed for your pleasure. So that's cool. It's not like just that standard, you know, like M4 cheesy, cheesy uh, pistol grip or anything like that. It feels really, really good. Good arch on it, uh, good angle on it. And I like how it is, um, kind of has that like rigid sandpapery feel. Um, I like the rubber ones better for your pleasure, but this one will do. It's not bad, um, especially when your hands are getting wet like they are right now and stuff like that, you can definitely you can definitely grab it a lot better. So I think that that is a good feature and I'm glad that they did that. Nothing too crazy. Um, it's kind of harder to find something that isn't, like has that, has that sandpaper texture than does, but they added it, it's cool, worth noting. No, nothing bad to say about it. The stock, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable, it's very, very thin, and I don't like it one bit. Uh, it's made by Magpul, so I like Magpul stuff, but I don't like this one. I think it was kind of interesting, interesting pick to put this on the, the spear, um, especially like a semi-automatic 308. This is something that you would put on like maybe like an AR or something like that. I don't like it. Uh, I want to upgrade it. It's very uncomfortable, but um, that's what they did. That's my first real negative gripe about the Sig Spear right out of the box is the, the stock. I don't like the Magpul stock, it's uncomfortable. It feels like just this giant Mike Tyson fist is going into your shoulder every time you shoot it. Um, the suppressor helps that out, but um, don't really like it. Buffer tube, I like how it is, in, it is adjustable. It does not have a buffer tube, excuse me. Um, all the stuff is internal. We can talk about that at a later date, but um, that is why, because it is it is a um, it is a folding stock. It's hard to do with one hand. I'll show you guys that later. But it is an adjustable stock that folds. Yes, did I say that right? It adjusts and it folds. Doesn't have a buffer tube. Doesn't have a buffer. It doesn't have a buffer spring. It's all internal, like the Spear LT. But so that is a very cool feature. I'm really really glad that it can. Um, it can fold, you can just hide it better, put it in a car, jump in the car, jump out of the car. Um, you just have a lot, a lot, you can, you can compact it a lot more when, when it can fold. So I'm glad that came stock with it and I wish more um, companies did do that with their rifles. But good job, SIG. You got it right, you got it right. I am happy with my SIG folding stock. The Sig Sphere, that's the video for today. I know we kinda, I didn't really talk too, too much about it. I kinda just did the basic rundown of it. And again, I don't, I, I only have about four or 500 rounds through it. Um, so I don't wanna give my honest, true honest opinion. I wanna be like, yeah, this thing is amazing. Go spend $4,500 on it. Then you're like, this thing's trash, I hate it. So I'm gonna just, I think that you should probably have a thousand to fifteen hundred rounds before you get like a really rough idea about how how the rifle is. But I'm not there yet. I will get there and I'll make another video on it. But this was just kind of my first first impressions of the spear, what I think about it, just from only shooting a couple hundred rounds through it, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. And so far, it's a pretty cool rifle. There's a lot going on, you got a lot of different controls and there's a lot of different things that you can set specific to yourself. Um, the things that I don't like about it right out of the gate is I don't like this. I don't like the Magpul stock. Um, definitely need to suppress it. That was something that I didn't bring up 
earlier in the video. I don't know if it was just me being a pussy or what, but this thing kicks. I really noticed that this thing is uncomfortable to shoot without the suppressor. And I should have brought that up earlier in the video because usually people don't stay till now. So you are the chosen one if you stayed this long, but it did kick. Without the suppressor, it was kind of uncomfortable to shoot. So that is something to be cognizant about that you should probably get a better muzzle brake for it and you should probably get a suppressor for it to, to help that recoil. Those are really my negatives to it is it kicks really, really hard and I didn't really like the stock. But other than that, um, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool rifle. Now, do I think that the Army should have replaced <laughs> the M4 with it? Yes and no. Okay, I don't think that it should have replaced the M4 as a whole. I think it should have been maybe a specific role, maybe like a DMR style role or something like that. Um, I don't think that it should replace the M4 on a whole army wide basis. Talk about the military industrial complex. That's probably what a lot of this was, was the military industrial complex. A lot of people got rich off of this contract. So they get rich, you go to war, you die. That's just the... That's just the go around, but I digress. We can talk about the military industrial complex at a later date, but uh, I don't think that it should replace the M4 as a whole. It's definitely a cool rifle, and I think that it, it, it has a lot of cool purposes to it, but the, um, not as a whole, not as a whole. Um, it should probably, again, it should probably be more of a DMR style role or something like that. Um, replacing that 5.56 with that larger, like, kind of battle rifle round, the 277 Fury, because that's what it's intended to be. It's supposed to be like the bridge between 308 and 5.56. Uh, there's a lot to talk about with that. I know we talked about, I made a video on, is the AR-15 trash? Is it obsolete when you start getting these lighter semi-automatic 308s um, that can, they're just as light, uh, they're more powerful, you can control the whole battlefield with it. I don't really know. Um, is it, is that longer distance range, are you good with sacrificing a good amount of ammo? Because your basic load is not gonna be 210 10 rounds anymore with, with the, um, the 6.8 by 51. It's just not gonna happen um, unless you start getting these big magazines, but I doubt it's gonna happen. It's probably gonna be 20 to 25 round magazines. So. Are you, are you comfortable with sacrificing distance for, or trading distance in sacrificing more ammo? I don't know. I think that the future battlefields will tell. Um, that's just like Vietnam where, you know, you were, you were close up, it was close quarters, and the person that suppressed the most rounds was probably going to be the victor. But where we're looking at now, in modern war and modern battlefields is that that's not really it just like Afghanistan where you were shooting these long long distances you know past the 300 400 yards um, so maybe this would have been a better choice in in Afghanistan but time will tell I don't really know thank you for watching I really appreciate it we will be talking about the Sig Spear again cool rifle really glad you guys tuned in um, didn't really Again, this video was not my honest opinion on it. It was just my initial opinion on it. So um, stay tuned. I really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button for me. Go check out the other videos. I love you all. Ugh. Ugh. This thing is freaking heavy, man. Look, I have to carry it around. This is how you're gonna see guys carrying it around. That's about what it is. Cheers, take care, bye.